Welcome to SVL Free News and Views for the Iredell County Sheriff's Office Community Watch with Sheriff Darren Campbell. As you can see here, I'm outside the, the newly built Iredell County Jail Expansion, which is getting ready to open the first year. On this episode, Sheriff Campbell's going to talk about what has to be done before it's open, kind of estimating a, a opening the first year and some of the advantages of this. So they're going to be able to bring back some inmates they've got housed outside the county, which is costing the county more money that way. They can save money by bringing those back here and also close down the work camp and bring everybody under one roof here centralized in downtown Statesville. Also on today's show, he's going to talk about the uh, recently completed Citizens Academy and how you can register for future Citizens Academy and also his recent trip to uh, Washington, D.C. with other sheriffs, what they're doing about border security and also doing about immigration uh, security as well. So let's hear what Darren Campbell has to say about that. Among other things, what's going on today in the Ardell County Sheriff's Office. I also want to thank all of you out there who have been calling in tips to this Ardell County Sheriff's Office. This the show is now about a year old, a little bit more than a year old, and thanks to you who have watched this, we have the most wanted here, and you can see, and you've been calling in tips, they want to thank you very much for what you've done here for the Ardell County Sheriff's Office. So let's go to Mike Furman, now with Sheriff Darren Welcome Campbell. The November episode of Community Watch with Ardell County Sheriff Darren Campbell. <laughs> Sheriff, thanks for joining us again this month. Hey, thanks for coming by. No, I know it's been a busy time. we got a lot to get through today. Let's start with the uh, most wanted. Our frequent flyers sometimes that we always do, but I like to call them. Here's our most one of the five most wanted for this week. Our first one is Erica Crystal White. Uh, she's one for breaking and entering and a Larson after breaking and entering. The last address we had her for was uh, 358 Clark's Oak Lane, which is in Troutman. Uh, she was born in 1979, so if you happen to see the individual, give us a call. Our second one is Jonathan Ray Dalton. He is one for Larson of a motor vehicle and assault on a female here in Idle County, and his last known address was 2965 Charlotte Highway, which is in Mooresville. Our third is Maurice Denard Jacobs, and he's wanted for three counts of financial card threat, two counts of identity theft, and also a breaking and entering charge. And the last uh, known address was 132 Red Oak Drive, which was in Statesville. Our fourth is Gilbert Flores, possession of intent to maintain, sell, and deliver Schedule 2 which is two charges of that, and also sell and deliver of a Schedule II controlled substance. Uh, two counts of that, and also to conspire to sell and deliver cocaine. Uh, his last known address is 111 Eastgate Drive, which is also in Statesville. Our fifth and final is Logan Timothy Lin Lindsay. He's one for a count, two counts of breaking and or entering, and larceny after breaking and entering two counts. Uh, his last known address was actually in Moxville over in Davie County of 195 Deadman Road. So if anybody happens to know where these individuals or if they see them on social media or may know where we could find them, we would love to know and contact us obviously at the Sheriff's Office. You can send us a message through Facebook at Idle County Sheriff and the number 704-878-3180. All right. Thanks, Sheriff. Um, next, let's talk a little bit about the uh, progress with the jail expansion. I know Constitution Lane's been closed. It uh, seems like they've got a, their final work order list. They're crossing some things off. You've got inspections going on. Uh, tell us where you are when you expect to move people in. You know, things are moving a lot. Hopefully, we'll expect to move in. Let's hope uh, is by the end of the year. There's a lot of stuff now that we're going through the process, and as of today, I believe a lot of the testing will go on. And when I say testing, I mean such things as our networks, the doors locking, uh, make sure the uh, the network boards are working. There's a lot of things in there people don't understand, or I guess it takes time for the inspections. You basically got the a building the size of a hotel mm -hmm. that'll be housing 500 people that will be locked in, and if something you know was to happen, we have to be able to evacuate those people, mm -hmm. uh, make sure that all of our security systems are working. So that's a lot of the testing going on for the next three days, but uh, they're finishing up, doing the rest of our inspections, final touches on. Uh, some inside some of the pods, our control board, so I'm still optimistic, but let's hope towards the end of December we will be transferring inmates in, and then we'll have a training period, sort of a little bit before that, to make sure that the detentions also totally understand how to work all the, the systems that's in the, the new building. So you'll be closing the work camp? We will be pulling the inmates away from the work camp. We will, we will continue to have a presence there, most likely probably for evidence, some of our assets as far as our SWAT team, uh, there's been a lot of stuff done over as far as inside is very secure. We have that lease to, I believe, 2043 at a dollar a year. 
So we've got some buildings and a lot of stores that a lot of people may not see, such as our command bus and different mm -hmm. things. Uh, that we have to store behind wire and, and lock doors, and that will be utilized a lot over there. And probably some of our undercover assets will be housed over there because it's out of the public eye mm -hmm. and we need it. But no more inmates will be housed. As of right now, no more inmates that will be housed over there, just because of the manpower and we'll have the presence here. And it's a lot safer to keep them on the same area for, you know, we don't have to transport inmates in and out of our communities. Now, there are many inmates from Idaho County that are currently housed in other counties too. Logistically, all, we should expect all those to be back in the county jail and stop paying to house them elsewhere by the end of the year also? Absolutely. I do not know exactly what the, the I can tell you about an average of what we've come up to. We're pushing $100,000 a month mm -hmm. housing out of county. Uh, we're making trips no matter how bad the weather, no matter what time of the day or night. If we have to get these inmates. Currently, we're in Wayne County, we're in Rowan, Alexander, Wilkes, and some in Cabarrus. And those inmates have to be transported back and forth. And that's a safety issue that, you know, heaven forbid, a, a, what if an officer hit a deer or had a motor vehicle wreck or became incapacitated, then you got an inmate that's outside, that's outside of secure custody. And uh, that's one reason we want to make sure we get them here. But hopefully, all that will be alleviated and we will be housing them in the same location. Okay. Now, as you, as you prepare for the move, uh, you have a few additional positions open that you're looking to fill? We are. We still have some detention facility positions open, uh, a couple on the enforcement side. Not as many as we have the positions, even though unemployment nationally and even on state level and in county is so low. We've been able to recruit and stay consistent with our recruiting and get the positions filled. But if anybody know, interested in a position, maybe the sheriff's officer knows somebody that would be interested, a good person to work, uh, come by, look online at idlesheriff.com, there's a link to it, or Idle County, and find out the requirements and the background requirements for uh, for working in the detention facility. Okay. Now, you recently uh, completed the Fall Citizens Academy, had a good turnout. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, that program, uh, the benefits you see from it. I think there's there's a lot. The, the Some of the pros is stuff, first of all, we get to meet the people and they get to see us and understand what we're doing. A lot of people didn't understand or do not understand the assets that we have in the county or the things that we're capable of doing other just what they may see a little bit on Facebook or in the paper uh, but they've got to, a chance to work in our crime scene as far as work with that our crime scene or evidence collection uh, seen demonstration and work closely with our canines our drone mm -hmm. uh, our SWAT team was there mm -hmm. uh, they got to see some of the stuff you know why sort of is the Bearcat is the new the, mm -hmm. the, the armored vehicle that we just recently purchased why we needed that solution if, if we was to have an active shooter at two different buildings, how this piece of equipment can provide a barrier and protection from a shooter. And uh, things like that that we're not aware of. Uh, how we work with our Homeland Security partners or FBI, how we work cold case, that was that was a, a hit, speaking about cold cases. Uh, there's some here in, in Idaho County that we're currently working still. One is over 40 years old and it's interesting to speak about that. So it was a great time, great turnout. Everybody that started, I think we ended up actually graduate more than actually started the first night so okay. it, it was a good it was a good thing i'm glad i'm glad we had it and i appreciate all the people that came out and participated all right well congratulations on that now you recently returned from washington a, a, a trip to the white house <laughs> tell us a little bit about that adventure well it's an adventure anytime you go to washington but we was invited there's about 170 sheriffs across the country that got an invite to come for by the fair group or by uh, angel moms which is basically parents that's had offspring killed by illegal criminal immigration. A lot of us involved in drugs, a lot of us drive DWIs, but that was the group come up there to have a chance to go to the Capitol and advocate for strong laws and securing our border. Uh, we know that there's such a nexus to our border with drugs and a lot of crimes, and these are your repeat offenders. But we did have an opportunity to spend two days, uh, one day at the White House on the grounds. Got a lot of updates from you know, more of the common names, the ICE director, uh, so uh, DEA director, Kellyanne Conway was there, and we got to spend a few minutes, a uh, short amount of time speaking with the president about issues that we see from elected sheriff's point of view and things and how it's impacting our our communities and the crime we see that is directed. While we may not be a per se border state within two days or a day and a half drive, you can be in North Carolina, and we see that impact, especially with some of the or especially with some of the uh, the communities that that seem to be providing safe sanctuary for repeat offenders, mostly illegal offenders that's been apprehended for dangerous crimes and then turn right back on the street and mm -hmm. uh, that's something we're not going to do here. Okay. And th that was discussed a lot there. And you're uh, getting ready to go to the border and uh, obviously you'll learn more about this. 
Yes, we were invited. I think there's probably 17 from across the country that was invited to the border. Uh, we'll go down there and we'll embed with Border Patrol, uh, some of the stuff, and I think there's days of air operations, uh, some on this side of the border, maybe even a little bit on the other side to see some of the issues they're having with the different cartels. And set it on some of the interviews from the crimes that these cartels and this type of illegal criminal immigration is having an effect on the interior states. And it may be such things as identity card theft. It may be such things as tactics against law enforcement. There's a lot of different sort of a surprise. They've not told us a lot. We'll get brief when we get there. But I think it's a three-day operation that we're being asked to come down. And I've spoke to two sheriffs that's done it here in the state of North Carolina before. And it was very beneficial to them, sort of how they strategize stuff on their interstate teams. And even their narcotics officers, how they build relationships, what are we looking for. The cartels is trapping a lot of the drugs from Mexico to make sure we understand the way they operate. And uh, we constantly said that, intelligence and training, and this was for law, law enforcement administrators. So that's the reason we get the opportunity to go. Well, very interesting. Safe travels. Thank you. Uh, make sure you take your passport so you can get back in the country. I will. I plan. I'm, I'm still there. There's been a lot of emails back and forth. This is what we need. This is the time. It's it's a little bit confusing. I think it's going to be very educational, and I think it's going to be hugely beneficial for us back here. All right. Well, safe travels. We'll talk to you again next month. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Sheriff.